Everybody, how's it going? It's getting savvy. Everybody savvy? Vinny, that's me. So, quick update. Uh, been working through all of the well, quick distraction. I've been I've been working and watching motocross all day. So, there we go. So, uh, been working on shielding and getting things dialed in. Found a few more issues. Uh, isolated the router uh, main 115 volt power cable away from everything and completely unplugged it. And then I even noticed that th there was even more. Uh, EMI issues uh, when I ran the the x-axis and the y-axis at the same time in the negative direction the Z um, I mounted my my steret uh, dial indicator on my z-axis and I noticed that when I ran the Z and the Y or when I ran the X and the Y together this would slowly just start stepping on its own and um, so I was like, well, that's a little weird. So I went back in the mock, I went back in the mock settings and con config ports and pins, then went over to motor outputs and I turned off the Z output there. So well, that'll do, what that does is that will turn off the function in Mach 3 to be able to move the z-axis. So if I turn it off and then try to move it, it doesn't go up and down or move. So that way I know that it's not software related. It, it is, uh, it's all EMI electromagnetic interference from somewhere. Um, so what I ended up doing is I turned it off, tried it, just moving the x and the y, and still, the, the Z axis would slowly step. So then I knew, okay, it's a wiring issue. I need to track this down. So what I did first is I dug through my wiring. I was gonna add the braided sheathing shield around, around my previous wires, but then I dug through my pile of, my shelf of, of wire over there, and I found I already had um, a whole roll of shielded four conductor cable. So I said, ah, oh, you know what? Screw it. So I just took apart, um, I got rid of all the old wire and I ran all new cable to every axis. And then I also added uh, a breakout here. Uh, the other day I had one of the motor couplers come loose and I had to take it apart, which it kind of sucked because I had I had this soldered to the wires and I couldn't take the motor off and put it on the bench and work on it because I was stuck to it and instead of doing some quick disconnects I, I just I found a um, little four pin uh, little break box here and I put one on each axis so that was pretty cool so now I can uh, if I want to run you know a quick multimeter test or check something or, or do what, or take the motor off for maintenance for whatever reason, I can do it. So um, I got everything nice and tidy. Um, I got all my grounds hooked up right to the motor and, and ran all the way to the machine. Um, some other countermeasures I did, I decided just to go through everything. So the end of the shielded wires, they have a braided shielded part inside of this cable. So you need to go in there and, and strip back the insulation a little bit. And then I added a conductor to bring it all to a ground path up to here. Um, I did the same thing with the, the higher current. Th these weren't so big of a deal. This is super low current. Um, the yellow, that is my five volt. It's, it's a two amp five volt, so it's not, eh, probably didn't need to be done, but why not? And um, the most important ones was my output from my power supplies. My power supplies are outputting uh, 36.2 volts. So this is my, my biggest antenna, my biggest cause of the EMI issue. So I made sure I kept it short um, coming out. That way there's no chance of a leak of, of EMI or letting EMI in. And then I did the same thing what I did with the little wires brought a conductor to each one straight to ground 
Um, so after doing that, amazing results. I couldn't believe it. I, I got everything hooked back up, fired the machine up, the motors, super silent. When, it, when I run the axes back and forth, they're not whining. They're not making any weird bu buzzing or, or noises. Super smooth operation. I, it, it, it just blew my mind when it ran. Um, here, here's a difference. I don't know if you can hear it. But I moved the X from side to side. At full speed, it, all you hear is just super silent motion. Before, it was making like a really high pitched, um, kind of like a high pitched ring. Uh, it was really like maybe 12,000 hertz or something like that. Um, and it had a pretty loud hum, but now super silent. Same thing with the Y. Um, I was also having a lot of lost steps in the Y. So in the Y axis, I have two motors, a uh, Y1 and Y2. And that means there's two lead screws driving the whole gantry um, side to side. So if one of these is losing steps, by the time I go back and forth a few times, if I go to measure from the edge here to here and compare it to this side, I was off about a half inch after I ran it back and forth a few times. Now, after I've done the grounding and I adjust some motor tuning parameters, which I'll show you that real quick. If I go up to config, motor tuning, you can see for my Y axis that these are my motor tuning parameters. So my steps per, that steps per inch, and then uh, velocity inches per minute and acceleration inches per minute is, is that's what I have it set to. Um, so it comes out to be this in G's, which is really slow. Uh, but with that, I found that with that feed and with that speed, the acceleration of velocity, that got rid of me miss losing steps. So therefore, my gantry will not get racked, is what you call it. So it'll, it'll end up getting so far out of alignment, it'll actually bind, which is real bad. So um, now it's come down to clean up my big mess. <laughs> I, I, I cannot stand working like this. It drives me nuts. So um, get everything back together, uh, get everything all cleaned up, make sure all the connections are tight, and then we'll do some, uh, run, run on cutting some programs. So, I will, uh, when I get around to doing that, probably tomorrow morning, uh, I'll get this all cleaned up and start running some programs. Until then, thanks for tuning in. This is Getting Savvy, Airbrush Savvy. Woo! Vinny, that's me. See ya. Peace.